All right, guys, we got a fun one. Lots of stretching, compression, very active pose. But it's the last one, so let's have fun with it. Gesture of the torso isn't very exciting here. We just, it's just straight up and down, right? Look at that gesture, wow. <laughs> so fluid. Sometimes a little bit of a cross contour helps with, with gesture. If you watch Vilpu's stuff, he's always pushing those cross contours as a gesture. Like if, a, if there's foreshortening, he, you know, if you draw in an arm like that, he's not gonna do the gesture of the, the lines this way. He's just gonna show you the cross contours coming at you. And that's the gesture. The gesture is foreshortening, <laughs> I guess. Plumb line from the top of the knee aligns with like a, the aces point, if I was to figure where that is. And then a plumb line from there is where the knee would be. So, boop, right there. Also don't want to make it too long. Hmm. Interesting. I usually push the curve this way to go with the quads. You know, to go with the top. But I'm not seeing the top. I'm, this is more of a front view of that leg. I'm going to push it the other way. I mean, actually, I see it that way, so I don't know why I, I didn't draw it that way. This way is the arc the gesture. Oh, that's probably in the wrong spot. God damn it. <laughs> this is where you can make changes. It's okay to erase at this stage. Once you've developed everything, you're shading, that's when it's like, ooh, you don't want to erase the leg then. There. This motion here, it's really, that's, that's what's happening, is very powerful arc from knee to knee. The zigzags here, really helpful to establish that power, the compression that's happening. I think the torso might be too wide for everything else, so let's just push it in a little bit. There you go. He's a lean guy, lean but very muscular. I feel like I I need to look through the underwear, look through all of that and just figure out where the pubic bone is because everything here is gonna be leading to that, right? The adductors on both sides. We need to figure out where the pubic bone is, where the center line leads to, right in there. Now we know where to attach the muscles. Okay, what's the one muscle I start with to divide quads from adductors? Sartorius. <laughs> and it's, it's there. Look at that. Uh, that huge bump right in the middle there, that's the Sartorius. Super, super developed on him. And it kind of just goes in here through, through to the tibia down here. Um, I mean, it actually really just, it gets lost in this bundle from the sartorius, uh, well, sartorius, hamstrings, and adductors. All of those kind of attach into that bundle. It gets really thick right in there in the middle. And then to the aces point, right through there. And then what's right next to the sartorius at the aces is the TFL, which we see right there. And then between those is the rectus femoris. That subtle layering right there is very cool, I think. But yeah, rectus femoris peaks pretty far back, in my opinion, all the way back here. And that's kind of nice. I don't want it to peak right in the middle, kind of a boring curve. If you offset the peak a little, more of an interesting shape is created. I mean, or forward as well. If you peek it forward, it'll be more interesting shape, but it won't be accurate. Because the rectus femoris is a, it rides high on the leg. Not like the other two quad muscles, surface quad muscles. Right in here, the vastus medialis takes over. Right? Boom. Very, very powerful shape right here. 
or powerful form. Looks very large. Like a big tube right there. Okay, adductors and hamstring, all that. Uh, down here, I'm just going to group them together into one f big form for now. And they all kind of go in here and attach to the bottom of the pelvis. A little bit larger. Boom. Establishing a peak right there, not directly below this one, a little bit farther back. Those are the kinds of things I look for when designing the contour, right? You want to create angles between contour peaks. And then actually I'm seeing a little bit of gluteus maximus right there. And then of course the crotch kind of covers a bunch of that. Underwear wraps around the cylinder of the leg like that, right? The other aces point is right there, front of the obliques. So if we know where that is, we'll know where the sartorius is on the other side. I'm not seeing the sartorius up here, but I am seeing a little bit of it down here. Very, very thin. Maybe like that. Super thin, it's very foreshortened. It's just rotated very much to the side plane. And then adductors coming out from behind that. Very stretched out. I think I, yeah, I didn't stretch them out enough. Gave it too much of a curve. It's just, boom, straight. Powerful, straight going this way. And then behind the sartorius, now the vastus medialis pokes out. right underneath the vastus medialis and then that, a little bit of a condyle right there right the edge the femur looks to me like we're seeing a lot of stuff on the side here and it's all very close together I think this is the hamstring tendon and then right next to it there's this big form right here of the IT band tendon. And then you know, this whole mass right here is vastus lateralis, connecting over here into the greater trochanter. Uh, greater trochanter, pretty easy to find on here just because of how prominent the gluteus medius is. And we know the gluteus medius just attaches to the greater trochanter. So if you look at the very bottom of the gluteus medius, that point, is the greater trochanter. So, if we know the greater trochanter is we know where to curve this vastus lateralis form, and then round that out a little bit more with the gluteus maximus in the back. This is the sartorius, and then we need to create that V shape in here, TFL. Just, just kind of stretched out. Very very straightforward TFL shape, just kind of how you'd see it in diagrams. And I, I do see its form on the on the photo. It's kind of a, a little bump right at the top there, sitting on top of the cylinder of the leg. Let's separate some of these abductors. I'm seeing two pipes. Boom, like that. It's pretty subtle, but I see it. Okay, back to this one. Ah, I'm seeing so many things. Okay, I'm pretty sure, okay, there's a little bump right in here, right underneath the TFL. I'm pretty sure that's um, the lateral head of the, the rectus femoris. Because if I were to divide this up into the quad shapes, it would be like this. Rectus femoris dives right in here, all right, right between sartorius and TFL. And that leads right into the quad tendon to the patella. Vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, up a little higher. 
from there and then arc this some more up a little even higher from that. And so right in here, we're seeing this little form and that's, you know, if I were to sh put the tendon in here between these two heads, this head falls right in that place where I'm seeing a little bump. So that's that. And then right to the very right of it, I'm seeing a little form like this kind of coming down. And well, we, I think that would be the corner of the, uh, the vastus lateralis attaching to its tendon right in this area. And then I do see a pinching right through here, which would be probably the IT band creating a pinch as it comes down into its tendon, which I remember I said is right here. But really all of these little things that I just mentioned, those are so subtle. If you were to draw like a superhero or something, you could probably just eliminate that, simplify the, these areas into just, you know, vastus medialis, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, adductor group, TFL, and then the, the, the glutes back here. And, you know, you kind of simplify them into these major forms and you'll be fine. You don't need to uh, get all these little pinching things in the corners, you know, design it in a way that will make sense with the gesture more so than what will make sense with the exact placement of the anatomy. Yeah, I would always lean towards being, uh, towards favoring the gesture rather than towards favoring accuracy because gesture will more likely create a better drawing. Whereas accuracy will maybe prevent people from calling you out, but you know, who cares? If you get a better drawing, that's what's gonna get you that job. Let's see, I mean right here, I didn't really do much, but I think it's pretty straightforward. There's the patella, right? Around the front, and then the tibia underneath, going boop, all the way to there. See that? Doesn't it look better as a corner? It looks more bony. I mean, as a simple shape, right? These are all very simple right now. It probably just looks better as like this really very uh, exaggerated design. If I were to make this more realistic, I wouldn't make these so sharp. I would round them out a little bit as they really are. But as I'm starting out, just kind of laying things in, I want to define things a little bit too much. Like this foot, it's like, that zigzag is way exaggerated. Uh, actually, on, when I look at it again, these little areas, these little um, creases right in here, I don't think those are the IT band. They look more like little f muscle fibers. They're like little fingers uh, kind of doing this sort of thing. I don't know if you guys could see it. And that looks very much like what the what the muscle would do, right? Like it looks like a flat plane right in here, which is a little tendinous, and then the muscle fibers are attaching to that. So it's round muscle, belly, flat tendinous area of the la of, uh, vastus lateralis. So muscle fibers would be kind of going in this direction like that, grabbing onto a flat tendon right in here. And then of course, right in there is the TFL. And by the way, the, when I say that this is a tendinous area, there's still muscle underneath it. I think there's, there's like this thin tendinous layer on top that muscle is attached to, but that muscle, even underneath that tendon, there's still bulky muscle underneath, underneath all of that going to the bone. Um, it's just on the surface, there's a tendinous sheet kind of covering a lot of this area on the side and the muscle is pretty small on the surface, but underneath there's still a lot of muscle fiber. Um, so it, it's still bulky in here. Uh, it just kind of creates a flattened area on the surface. <laughs> hope that makes sense. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the assignment example. If you want to get the answers to all the assignment examples for the quads and all the other anatomy, lessons, uh, head over to proco.com slash anatomy uh, and you'll get all the premium content in there. So keep learning your anatomy, draw those superheroes and stuff. <laughs> all right, see you in the hamstrings.